All right, so episode 10 is going to deal with function calling, and how we're going to do this is this piece of code is what we're going to be compiling by the end of the episode. We're just going to have our main function, and it's going to return whatever the test function returns. So that should just return our 69. And how we're going to make it or call functions is how usually a lot of other languages do it. It's with our parentheses. So we'll, all we're going to do is implement a new AST node for the call expression. So that's basically just going to be this. And then we're going to add some new parser functions for if we encounter this left parentheses in this certain context, that means we're trying to call something instead of trying to do math. And we'll move into our AST. First thing we're going to add is our call expression equals call expression node type. And we are going to go down to the expressions. Create a new class, call expression, inherit from expression, make our init method, and I'll paste this, these functions in here for the sake of time. So we have our function. The function variable is just going to be an identifier literal, just pretty much the name of that function. And then any arguments that it has, for right now we're going to have no arguments, or no abilities to pass in arguments or parameters. That'll be coming in the next episode. So that's all we'll take in. And these arguments are just going to be a list of expressions. And then the type, which is a call expression, then our JSON, just same as everything else. So we'll save that and go to the parser. We'll import our call expression. We're going to go down to our precedences mapping and add in our left parentheses. And we're going to map that to the call precedence type that we've already set up before in our enumeration. I'm going to scroll down to our infix parse functions. We're going to add a new infix parse function, token type dot left parentheses. We're going to call a new function, parse call expression. So we'll scroll down to our the bottom of our expressions. So here's all our statements, and now here's our expressions. So we'll go to the bottom. We'll make our function parse call expression taken self, and this will return back our call expression node. Go ahead and make the instance of our class. Let's pass in our function. We go function. Now I forgot to add this in here. When the this function is called, they're going to be passing in a variable, and that will be of type expression. So, pretty much will be a identifier literal that goes into here. And then for our arguments, expression of arguments, we're just going to enter in our empty list for now and put a to do on here for the next episode. Then if not self dot underscore underscore expect peak token type dot right paren. So if there is not a right parentheses after the left one, we're going to throw an error pretty much. So we'll return none out of that. And after that, we'll return expression. Now this bit of code will be removed after we get to creating our parse parameters or parse arguments function. So this is just temporary for right now. So now that we have that out of the way, we can go into main.py. We can set compiler and run code to false. We can set parser debug to true. And then we will, let me go into the right episode. We will run the file main.py. So we got compiler objects, that's fine. We're not worried about that. Worry about this AST debug. So go in the JSON file, we'll put test.lime up over here. This first one's our function statement test, and it just returns back 69. Then our next one, 
our main function, and here we are. So we're returning a call expression, and the name is a test, or the function's test, and the arguments are blank. So there's nothing in the arguments, which is perfect. So the AST is done for now. So we'll get out of that. We'll go ahead and set the part, the compiler debug to true, set the false back to, or parser debug back to false. Then we'll move into our compiler. First thing, we'll import call expression. We will go to the compile visit method. And down here in the expressions, we'll add a new case, node type, dot call expression. And we'll make a new visit function for that. Pass in the node. We'll scroll all the way down to our visit expressions. So infix expression here. And right below that, we'll do def visit call expression self, the node, call expression node. We're going to turn back none. First thing we're going to do is take in, get our name of our function. So node.function.value, since this is an identifier literal. To get our params, list expression, node.arguments. This is going to be empty for now, so we won't use it. We're going to just set two variables here for later, args and types. And we'll add a to-do here. We won't use those yet, but we'll keep them for now. We're going to do a match statement on the name. This is where if we're trying to call a built-in function, we would, this is an easy place to put, like we'll put our case printf in a later episode here. But for now, we're going to do the underscore for just anything, whatever this name is for now. We're going to grab our function and our return type from our environments, so self.env.lookup. So we're going to look for that function. We're going to set our return variable to self.builder.call. We're going to call that function with the args declared above. Now, this call, whatever this this function returns, we will return it back from here. So we'll return from the call expression and the return type as well. Now we need to scroll down to resolve value and add our call expression case into here. So case node type dot call expression. And then all this does is call the function we just set up. So visit call expression, pass in that node. So that's all that's going to do. Now we'll go back to main because that should be everything we have to do for the compiler. We'll go ahead and run this with our compiler debug as true. And we'll investigate this IR. We'll bring test that line up as well. So, all right, so we have our test function, return 69 in here. We have our main function, that's calling the test function. And then it returns whatever the test function returns. So that's perfect. So that's, we can run our code as well. Now that we run that, and we can see our program return 69. So we can plus another god number. And here we go. And now our program is returning. So we're able to call these functions. So now that we're able to call these functions, the next thing up will be adding parameters to these functions. So we could have a bruh add, then a and b. Turns back an integer, and this will return a plus B, and then we could call the add function with one and two here, and this would just resolve, it would just add those numbers together and then return back the answer. So that's what we're going to work on next is these adding arguments and parameters to functions. Thank you for watching. We have the Discord in the description below if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I saw a couple people had some issues with uh, some of the prior episodes and we were able to I was able to help them out in the discord so definitely join that if you're running into any issues 
Thanks for watching. We'll see I'll see you in episode 10 for function parameters and arguments.